station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Station has you loud and clear. Great, thank you. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, I'm Dr. Crystal Hardin, Director of Program and Inclusion Initiatives at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hills, Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. Today's questions for our astronauts aboard the International Space Station come from the amazing students across the state of North Carolina. Now, here's our first question. Hello, my name is Derek and I am from North Carolina. My question is, I've noticed Expedition 65 crew members are from different countries. What is it like to work together and what have you learned from each other? Well, you're right that the International Space Station crew is made up of um, crew members from all different countries. Shane and I from the United States, along with Mark Vandehei. We also have our ISS commander is from Japan. Another ISS um, engineer is from France. And then we have two Russian cosmonauts. So we all work together on a regular basis. And I think it's wonderful to have people with different backgrounds and different perspectives. We all learn from one another, whether it's just specific technical skills or whether it's learning about one another's country and and cultural traditions. So I find it to be a lot of fun to have an international crew. Hi, my name is Olivia and and I'm from North Carolina. My question is what does the earth look like from outer space? Thanks for the question. The Earth looks absolutely amazing. It's really beautiful. The colors are just striking, no matter if you're looking at the Bahamas like a beach or the desert. Um, to me, it's very striking. So um, it's just a beautiful view. Actually, we have a little um, globe here that hopefully you can see. And what we don't see is like the whole thing, unfortunately. We're only 250 miles up, um, so we're really close to it. So we, we don't get to see all the way around like um, the, the men did from the moon back in the 60s and 70s like this. So we're much closer than that, but still our perspective is pretty fantastic and it's a gorgeous sight. Hi, my name is David and I'm from North Carolina. My question is, how do you cope with the gravity change when you first get on the International Space Station? That's a great question because for most of our lives we live on Earth and we have Earth's gravity that we're experiencing. So when we first get into space, our brain and our body is pretty confused and it takes a few days for you to start to feel normal again. You feel a little bit sick to your stomach at first when you get here and you have a, a lot like a like a stuffed up head like you have a cold. But once your body and your brain figures it out, you can do like Shane is doing right here. He's upside down compared to me, but he feels exactly the same as I do, which is different when you're on Earth. If you hung upside down like from the monkey bars, you're going to feel all that blood rushing to your head. But he and I can feel exactly the same whether one of us is upside down or right side up. It's pretty cool. Hi, I'm Kalea and I'm from North Carolina. My question is, is why do astronauts get weaker in space? Thank you. Well, Thank our... You. Oh yeah, good question. So if if we did not work out up here, then our bones actually would start deteriorating and that's not good obviously. And we've found this out over the many years we've had people flying in space. And so because we know that now, then we we get to work out about 2 hours every day to really work our muscles. Um, to get stronger for one, but also to prevent that bone loss. That's really the key. Uh, and I would say after a long duration mission like this, um, typically we come back actually a little stronger because we are working out so much. I mean, rarely at home do we work out every day for two hours a day. So um, our strength is gonna be up and because of this workout program, our bone density is also not gonna change very much. And that's really important. Hi, I'm Lincoln from North Carolina. My question is, what future space mission are you most excited about? 
That is a great question. We have a lot of future space missions to be excited about. We have a lot of current missions to be excited about, actually. We think our International Space Station mission is pretty great. And one of the things that we get to do while we're up here is look at technology that's going to be used on some of these future missions, like people returning to the moon and going on to Mars. Um, and right now at Mars, as you probably know, there's a helicopter on Mars that people can remotely fly. So really lots of exciting missions going on now to prepare us to do things like sending people to the moon and Mars. So lots to be excited about. Hi, my name is Inda and I won and I'm from North Carolina. I wanted to know if you can grow vegetables in space. Yeah, you know, we get to do that every now and then. And actually just this morning, I planted a, a new set of crops, I'll call it, in the space plant habitat. Um, and we're gonna be growing chili peppers here. It's gonna take us about four months um, before we can harvest them. And it's gonna be right about the time we're supposed to go home, but we're hoping we get a sneak peek and maybe get to have a few before we come home. On my last mission, I grew lettuce. It was really fantastic. We got to grow it, we got to harvest it and eat it. Um, and then send some back down to, to Earth as well so that the scientists could really look at what was going on. And this will all help us, like Megan was talking about in the last question, as we go to the moon again and Mars down the road, it'll help us um, create plants and things that the astronauts can eat on those different planets. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm from North Carolina. <clears throat> and my question is, what's the most fun part about astronaut training? Well, I think the most fun part about astronaut training is that I get to learn to do so many different new things. I don't just have to learn one thing. I got to learn a whole bunch of stuff, which is challenging. It's hard sometimes, but it's also a lot of fun. I get to learn how to fly and monitor spacecraft. I get to learn how to do spacewalks and do robotics and then all kinds of science experiments. So for me, getting to do all of those different things is a lot of fun. I'm Leela and my question, I'm from California. My question is, what does it smell like in space? Uh, space has a few different smells, I would say, here in the International Space Station. It's pretty normal. I would say it's kind of like being in an office building or your school. Um, there's an air conditioning system here that kind of cleans out a lot of the, the potential odors, which is great. Um, and I noticed a difference on my very first flight when I came up here. It kind of smelled like a gym. Um, just because you know the circulation wasn't you know as good as it is now, but now it's it's pretty clean. Now, when things show up from outer space, like if you go outside to do a spacewalk and you come back in, or if we have another spacecraft that shows up and then you open up the hatch, you actually smell space, and and it's kind of hard to describe, but it's this metallic smell. I think Megan says it hamburger. smells like hamburgers. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe we're just really hungry for a real hamburger up here, but um, it does have kind of a unique. Um, space does have a unique smell when you see something or smell something that comes in from the outside. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm from North Carolina, and my question is, what advice do you have for someone currently working towards the requirements of joining the next generation of astronauts? Sean, that's a great question. So obviously, um, professional astronauts right now, we have a, back, a background in the sciences and engineering. So all of those uh, science and mathematics classes that you have are really important. But I think the most important thing is to try different things as you're growing up and as you're thinking about what you want to do in the future. Try out some different things and figure out what it is that you really love to do and then work hard to do that thing well. You want to choose something that you're going to love to do no matter what, no matter, no matter whether you become an astronaut or not. And uh, if you don't love what you're doing, you're probably not going to be as good as something that you really love doing. So my advice is to just kind of take a look around and figure out what it is that you're going to love to do. Hi, my name is Jana Powell, and I'm with the Saunders Science Scholars Program in North Carolina. And today my question for you is, when you look down from space on Earth, what vibe does it give you or what does it make you think of? 
Wow, it gives me a lot of different emotions, honestly. We get to look out the window you know, almost daily, if not multiple times daily. It's, it's a very humbling perspective, honestly, for me. So that's one of the emotions I feel um, that, wow, you know, uh, we're, we're pretty small when you look at this grand earth beneath us. Um, it's also a fragile earth, and that's something I, I feel when I look down at earth. So it makes me want to really take care of it when I get back home. And so it's kind of changed my perspective a bit in that, in that way. So hopefully those are a couple of things that you can think of, humility and and, uh, fra fragility. Hi, my name is Griffin. I'm from North Carolina. And what's your favorite um, science experiment on the space station? We get to do so many different science experiments on the space station today. Already, I've interacted with two different experiments. Um, but some of the ones that are really fun for us to interact with is when, when we get to do a lot of the work. So recently, I did one called Real-Time Protein Crystal Growth. And that involved me preparing a, a samples that I would put on a plate that we then incubated. And then later, we got to take turns looking at them through the microscope to help identify the protein crystals. So it turns out that protein crystals can grow really well in micro G, grow longer chains than you might be able to do in a lab on Earth. And that helps scientists look at diseases and potential treatments for diseases by having these long chain protein crystals that they can look at. So that's been a fun one for us to work on recently. Hi, my name is Cecilia. I am from Korea. And I, my question is, how do you have fun in outer space? We, have, we work really hard up here, first of all, but we have a lot of fun as well. Our crewmates are really fun to be around. Um, just this weekend, we actually did a version of the Olympic Games up here on the space station, so that was really fun as we kind of get ready for the Olympics here in the next few weeks on Earth. So that was, that was fun to do. Just flying around is really fun. Uh, we get to enjoy, usually on the weekends, we'll have the entire crew um, together for dinner, and we just get to, get to enjoy each other and talk about the week and talk about things on Earth um, with different cultures and different you know, countries represented, so that's a lot of fun as well. Uh, we can watch movies, we can uh, watch TV shows for in our free time as well, so there's plenty to keep us um, having a good time up here. Hi, my name is Henry. I'm from North Carolina, and my question is, do you uh, have to learn any new languages in space? So depending on what vehicle you fly to the space station on, you might be learning a new language. So for example, Shane and I, this time we flew on a vehicle from the United States that was built and we trained here in the United States. Previously, Shane flew on a Russian vehicle, and that vehicle launched from Russia. So he did a whole bunch of training in Russian, um, in, in Russia and in the Russian language. And so learning Russian is also very important. Um, we have an international space station crew, and so it's nice uh, to be able to say at least a few phrases in other people's languages. But mainly the language that we use on the space station is English. Hello, I'm Max, and I'm from North Carolina. And I have a question, my question for you is, what do you see as the biggest challenge is sending humans to Mars? Well, we have several challenges ahead of us in order to get a human to Mars. And a couple of them that I think of right off the bat is just the time it takes to get there currently is you know, over six months. So I think we need to figure that one out and make that a little bit shorter for uh, humans to actually stay in a spacecraft for that long. Um, another one's radiation. There's a there's a big radiation dose that you're going to get, or whoever's going to go there is going to get on the way, and it's something that um, I know our our doctors and, and astronauts are really concerned about. So we got to make sure we handle that problem as well. Um, you, you can't just go there and come back um, for free, so to speak. So you're going to um, have a lot of radiation, and we need to figure out ways to shield the astronauts um, or the people that are going there in order to protect their health. My name is Beck, and I'm from North Carolina, and my question is, what would you do if you got lost in outer space? 
Well, that's an interesting question. The first step is to try really hard not to get lost. So when Shane and uh, our other crewmates go outside the space station to do a spacewalk, they wear a special suit. Um, and we don't have one in here anymore. We used to have one right here on the ceiling. But they wear a special suit, and they always have a safety tether, which is kind of like a fishing line that they attach to the space station right outside the door. And then that um, holds on to them as they move around outside. But if they did ever come off the space station, they have a jet pack that they can use used to fly them back to the space station so they could get their hands on a handhold again and be safe. So we try really, really hard not to get lost, but we have a couple of ways to get us back to safety on the International Space Station if that did happen. Hello, my name is Hane. I'm from North Carolina, and my question is, are you trying to find a planet like Earth? Well, uh, up here on the International Space Station, that's not our primary mission. Um, but future exploration, um, we definitely want to go out and, and explore the solar system. So, you know, in the next few decades, we're going to send a human to Mars. That's going to be one of the, the very first steps before we go, start going to other planets, of course, and see what Mars holds and see, you know, what qualities maybe it has that uh, look like Earth or still look like Earth and why it does it not look like Earth anymore if it did at one time. So we're going to go explore and we're going to have a lot of really smart people looking at all the data that the astronauts bring back and try to figure out if there's another planet somewhere that is somewhat something like Earth. Hi, my name is Declan and I'm from North Carolina. My question is, how do you safely navigate and protect yourselves from space junk while orbiting and are there any projects to help reduce space junk? Declan, that's a really great question. As you know, um, it's always really important to pick up after yourself um, and to not leave trash laying around. And orbital space debris is a real problem or space junk. And every country that has is spacefaring has a responsibility to try to clean up their own stuff. NASA has an orbital debris office that they've had for many years that um, does track the debris that's, that's out here. And um, to help keep us safe, if there is a piece of debris that comes close to the space station, if it's too close, um, then we'll try to move the space station away from it. And so that's one of the things that we do to stay safe from orbital debris. But it really is an international problem with all the satellites that are in orbit. Um, and there's lots of people trying to think of ways to reduce the amount of space junk and protect the spacecraft that are up here from other pieces of, of uh, space debris. Hello, my name is Avinash and I'm from North Carolina. I have a question for you. My question is, what's it feel like to go outside of your vehicle and take a spacewalk? It's a pretty incredible feeling, um, when you, especially the fir very first few times you go out. Um, when you see Earth below you traveling really quickly, it's pretty pretty daunting, um, but you get we get right to work. Um, we're trained to do a mission. We're outside about six or seven hours at a time when we go outside for a spacewalk. So we know we have a long day ahead of us and we're very focused um, and it's very physically and mentally challenging while we're out there for those six or seven hours. But uh, it, it's a pretty cool feeling. We have that big white spacesuit. You've probably seen us in pictures doing that. And that's it weighs about 300 pounds. So up here it doesn't weigh anything, but it's still a mass that we have to move around and control. So that's where we get physically kind of worn out um, by the end of the day. Uh, but it's really a great feeling to, to go out there, not just to go outside, but to go out and do some meaningful work, um, usually enhancing the, the space station, things like that, to really make you feel good when you come back inside on a successful day. Hi, my name is Rohan. I'm from North Carolina. This is my question. What does it feel like when you're getting launched into space to go to the International Space Station? Well, it is a lot of fun. It is a whole lot of energy um, that is launching you off the Earth and into space to get to the space station. And so it's faster and more power than anything else you've ever experienced in your whole life. And so there's a moment where your eyes get really big and then our crew, we all kind of started laughing a little bit just because of that tremendous feeling of power um, and that also that we were launching at last after all the training that we had done. So it's very, very exciting, but it's really a lot of energy, a lot of power. Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm from Georgia. And my question is, is living within the International Space Station what you initially expected? And if so, what is something you predicted would occur that did happen? 
Well, that's a tough one. Never heard that question before. That's a great one. Um, I think the first few days, at least, when you come up here, you're not feeling 100%. And uh, I was, you know, we, we both were kind of expecting that and we're told that by our other crewmates. And it, it, it held true <laughs> um, for, for me, at least. And uh, But then after that, your your body figures out where you are, this this unique environment that, that you're in. And, uh, and you really find a nice rhythm. And so um, we expected that, I think, and it, it did come out to be true, um, at least for, for myself. I don't know about Megan, so maybe Megan as well. Uh, some people come up here, they don't have any issues, but uh, it just took me a couple of days to feel 100% again. That was so much fun. From all of us here at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, thank you to our students and astronauts, Megan MacArthur and Shane Kimbrough. Safe travels. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.